good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for being here and for helping to fill up a room on a very special day. The Salem Chamber is thrilled to have you all here for our forum series luncheon, and we know we have a very special program today, but as usual, we have a couple special treats along the way that are continuing to make these can't-miss events. Uh, today's forum topic is Salem for Refugees, and we have Anya and Doug Holcomb, co-directors of that effort, who will speak to us today and tell us a little bit about a special, special group occurring in this community and how far those threads go, uh, both internationally and across the United States. And a great work that Anya brought forward to me was the special ingredients that exist in this city to make an effort like this uh, possible. Today's forum is made possible by our friends at Huggins Insurance Services. And we know the great work. Oftentimes it's easy to see how present in our community uh, TJ Sullivan is and Don Bostwick, but their staff is also very involved in this community. And that starts from the ownership level, uh, whether it's Mercedes going through our Leadership Salem group, uh, a number of uh, Dave on the on the golf course, wherever that is, uh, you see Huggins Insurance in our community, and we thank them so much for that partnership. November is a month to give thanks, and last Monday, we got to all reflect on the great work of our veterans. And uh, on Thursday night, we had the, uh, our great educators recognized in the effort of the Crystal Apple Awards in partnership with our Salem-Kaiser School District. And when you looked at those nominees as well as the award winners, uh, I think it's a great opportunity for us as a business community to thank collectively the work of educators across our city. So thank you, educators. And then of lastly, of course, in this month of Thanksgiving, we thank our family and friends and our business constituents who make this community so special. If I could, would the elected officials in the room please stand and be recognized today? We have many great caretakers of the Salem Chamber organization, and those are your board of directors. Would our board members please stand and be recognized? And of course, those who really created the path and put in the huge amount of effort as presidents of this organization, would the past presidents please stand and be recognized? I can't say enough about the men and women who make up our board of directors and our past presidents and how seriously they take the task of making sure this organization is heading to new heights each and every day. Uh, our past presidents meet, met last Friday and I would let you know that the month prior there were 17 members of that group in attendance and that is an incredible amount of individuals coming to make sure the Salem Chamber is doing special things and continuing to make sure this community finds successes. Allow me to introduce our head table today. To my uh, far left is Doug and Anya Holcomb, co-directors of Salem for Refugees. Next to them is the president of Huggins Insurance Services, Don Bostwick. To my immediate right is Victoria Shin, who you'll hear a little bit more about later. Victoria is the Vice President and Depository Relationship Manager for U.S. Bank. And then next to her is our own T.J. Sullivan, who serves as this organization's President, as well as the Vice President of Marketing for Huggins Insurance. Join me in welcoming our head table. Now, it's a wonderful... Uh, that we get to gather and hear about the Salem for Refugees uh, effort. In fact, a little bit of selfish here, a company that I came out of for 15 years, Don Pancho Mexican Foods, is one of the lead employers uh, for those people coming into our community. An individual I got to meet a few months ago uh, at Geppetto's when they were doing their grand opening, grand reopening, following a fire, 
in addition to all those wonderful ambassadors who were there, was a very bright young lady. And uh, at this point, I'm going to invite uh, Shivali Kadam to join us on stage. Shivali is your Miss Oregon. Shivali. Shivali is a woman of many talents. She resides in the Portland area, and on December 19th, will re represent our great state of Oregon at the Miss America competition. That's occurring in Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, Shivali's talent, many, but her talent on display today will be her vocal talents. She's gonna do our national anthem, and that will be followed. I'd ask you to remain standing uh, following the anthem for a presentation by our superintendent of Salem Academy, Mr. John Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, Shivali Kadam. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Will you bow with me? Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the opportunity to gather here together with, with so many friends, so many that are uh, concerned and, and interested in reaching out in this great community you've called us to. Lord, we pray a blessing on the Holcombs and the ministry of Salem for Refugees. Lord, just continue to provide, to give them your vision uh, for the amazing work that you've called them to. Uh, we thank you for the provision of food. Thank you for Huggins and, and for everyone who's gone into just, just providing and being your hands of ministry to us today. And I pray that every one of us would look for the ways that you're calling us uh, to reach beyond ourselves. And I pray that today would just be inspiration for that, that we might accomplish your great will in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, do we think we put Connecticut on notice? <laughs> Shivali, we are so proud of you and cannot wait to see how much success you not only have in December, but in life. Ladies and gentlemen, Shivali and her great work ahead. One of the real fun things that we have uh, the ability to do is partner in this community. And I'd like to uh, thank my peers, uh, Eric Anderson, Mike Erdman, Holly Sears, at the Realtors, the Home Builders, and at SEDCOR. Tomorrow afternoon from 12 noon to 1, that's right, one hour of time, we're going to have the opportunity to bring in members of all four organizations for a joint organizational meeting on the Our Salem Project. If you're not familiar with Our Salem Project, we hope that you will click on our website or any of the participating organizations' websites to learn more about what that is. It is our chance to look at the mapping 
look at how we want Salem to look many, many years into the future. Our comp plan hasn't been uh, overhauled or really dug in deep in over 20 years. This is our chance as a business community to come together in one room, work with the city staff, with uh, one of our lead planners at the city in Eunice Kim, and put together the vision that we as a business community feel would be healthy for the city of Salem. You are all invited. That meeting is from 12 noon to 1 o'clock tomorrow at the Salem Chamber, and that's in partnership with the Mid uh, Valley Association of Realtors, uh, the Home Builders of Marion Polk County, the Strategic Economic Development Corporation, and of course your Salem Chamber. Uh, there are flyers on your tables, and I would invite you to read more about that. All we would ask for is an RSVP. Info at SalemChamber.com because lunch will be provided. It's now a great pleasure for me to introduce our Salem Chamber President, Mr. T.J. Sullivan, uh, to talk more about our wonderful new addition to the Forum Series Luncheons, our Spirit of Salem Award. T.J., welcome to the stage. Thanks, Tom. The uh, Spirit of Salem Award is our chance to recognize the influencers who put Salem first and inspire other individuals to become champions for our city. The recipients of this unique monthly award are the quiet drivers of a healthy and engaging business community. This month's award recipient is Victoria Shin, Vice President and Depository Relationship Manager with U.S. Bank. That's a lot. Um, Victoria is a fourth generation Oregonian born and raised in Salem, Oregon with deep roots in the valley. Her great grandfather Kerr was president of the Oregon Agriculture College, now Oregon State, for 25 years. Her grandfather, Bob Shin, was instrumental in the creation of Willamette Valley Cherry Growers. <clears throat> Her grandfather, Lovell, was one of the original settlers in the Aurora Colony. Victoria began her accidental banking career with U.S. Bank in 1981 and has worked for U.S. Bank for over 30 years with an eight-year break working in the mortgage lending field with the Fidelity Title and Escrow Company and then back to U.S. Bank. She is currently a VP, Deposit Relationship Manager for U.S. Bank's commercial team here in Salem, covering a large multi-county territory. Victoria has been involved in the Salem-Kaiser community for decades, helping to support organizations in various ways, from a committee member to serving on various boards and leadership councils to ch chairing the Iris Festival in its early years. What is often not spoken of Victoria is that she is a cancer survivor and a champion for those in this fight. She has motivated her peers and countless community citizens to not give up their fight. Victoria is a living, breathing billboard for perseverance and strength, facing life's toughest challenges. State's Chamber Past President Ryan Albritton, look up the word optimist in the dictionary. You will quickly find the picture of this strong, tough woman and her ever so captivating smile. She is the epitome of heart, tenacity, loyalty, passion, and community. Peer and friend Art Bobowitz shares, as you know, Victoria helped start Corporate Coffee of Oregon a number of years ago. Knowing Victoria has been both an honor and a privilege. She is the one of the most authentic people I've ever met. I consider Victoria a true community leader with a business warrior ethos. If she sees someone either struggling with their business or facing a career challenge, she takes her energy and attitude to the problem and lets them know she is there to help. She will not leave an associate or friend on the business battlefield. She has the professional and priceless gifts of attitude, leadership, and listening. Please join me in recognizing our Spirit of Salem Award winner, Victoria Shin. Wow, thank you. Um, humble doesn't even speak, it speaks volumes. I thank you all, and I just wanted to say a couple things. Tom was sneaky last week. I knew he was up to something, but I really was too busy to pay attention to it. And what I wanna tell you all, without all of you, and this might sound really strange to you. Some of you don't know me yet. You will. 
Those that do know me, you know what I mean. Without you, I may not be here right now. Three years ago, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer spread to liver and bones stage four. In theory and according to statistics, I shouldn't be standing here in front of you. But I reached out because I needed to to everyone saying, I need your help, I need smiles, I need you to keep me on track with lunches, water, whatever it is, all day. And I'm here to tell you, together, we can do anything. I'm serious. And so continue what we're doing, reaching out to each other one smile at a time. No man left on the battlefield, man or woman, person, left on the battlefield ever. We pull together and make it happen, and that's what Salem's about as well. I'm so proud to be here. My mother always said, be very proud of your heritage, which I really discounted until a couple of years ago, and now I understand what she meant. I am so proud of my grandfather who came across on the wagon train. I mean, you talk about resiliency. We can do it together, but we can't do it by ourselves. So thank you for being supportive of me. Thank you for this honor. I am shaking right now, and thank you. I'll leave you with that. So Victoria also has a pretty good poker face. When I opened up my very first banking account, uh, I went to U.S. Bank on commercial by Fred Myers there, and Victoria opened it up, and she never snickered once when she looked at what I was opening my deposit with, um, and she did a very real good job of making me feel like I, I was a super important client, even though I was broke as a joke, and, <clears throat> and I've never forgot that, so thank you for that, Victoria. Um, Huggins Insurance, we're, we're uh, proud, uh, proud to sponsor this in, in our partnership with uh, Bliss Sequoia Insurance. Um, insurance is, can be super boring and, and I know every time I walk into a room or an elevator and somebody asks me what I, I do for a living and I tell them that it's insurance, I, they often take like two steps away from me um, because they're afraid that we're going to get into a discussion about liability coverage or something like that. Um, but, but I will say that um, what makes us different I think is that the people that, that we get to do insurance with inside of our agency. Um, both uh, Lance Barnwell and Matt Loken and Don and myself have um, made it an emphasis that uh, we would assemble the best people, that we would have fun inside the office, and that we would go out of our way to take great care of our clients and community. And I, I think that that's what sets us apart, is that we really do uh, look at what we do <coughs> as, as protecting you, uh, protecting your assets. We're not concerned so much about the price you pay. It is important to us, but we're more worried that when you walk out of our doors that you know that you're protected and that you have an advocate inside of our office. And um, we also give back a lot to the community. I know we recently had somebody came in and looked at our business model and what we were doing. And, and one of the takeaways that she had for us as owners was, you guys are giving away way too much money back to your community. You guys are far and beyond what uh, is normal in any industry, but especially yours. And so I think that's a testament to who we are and what we do. And so just know when you do business with us, uh, that it, your money is getting plugged back into this community in a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm equally excited that we get to be the sponsors um, for this week, this month's forum with Salem for Refugees. Uh, two things uh, about me. One is that I am a huge pro-Salem guy. I, I love this town. I love what we're doing. And, and I'm an I'm a, a unrelenting optimist. If I see that there's a 1% chance, I, I'm, I'm like dumb and dumber. So you're, you're saying I got a chance. Um, and what I love about Salem for Refugees is that what they're doing in little Salem, Oregon, is having a worldwide impact. And I think that we could, all of us could say that if we knew about a Salem entity that was having a worldwide impact, that we would be excited about, about promoting that. And so I am hugely excited. Uh, Doug and Anya uh, are doing tr a tremendous work. Uh, it's, it's not easy to do uh, what they're doing uh, in the face of, of a lot of different pressures. Um, and so I'm excited that uh, we get to sponsor them. So with that, I'd like to welcome Doug and Anya up to the stage.
Thank you, TJ. We are Anya and Doug Holcomb, the co-directors of Salem for Refugees. A little bit about us. I grew up here in Salem-Kaiser, so this is my hometown. Uh, but then we lived in various places around the world, including East Africa, where we met, lived in the Middle East, and then lived in Portland for a number of years. Most recently, we were living in Eastern Europe doing relief and development work. And while there, we were exposed to the global refugee crisis. It was during 2015, there was a mass movement of people coming out of Africa and the Middle East, making their way through East Eastern Europe on their way into Western Europe. So that was our exposure to this big crisis that's happening in our world today. We moved back to Salem in October of, uh, or actually in February of 2016, and it was right at the time when refugee resettlement was beginning here in Salem-Kaiser. And we knew that we had to get involved, that we had to respond because our hearts had um, just really been broken for what was happening around the world. So we founded Salem for Refugees in October of 2016 in partnership with Salem Leadership Foundation, Salem Alliance Church, and the broader Salem community. We also work as pastors of refugee ministries at Salem Alliance Church. So that's a little bit about us. A huge thank you to TJ, to Huggins Insurance, to all of you for having us here today. I was telling Tom at the beginning, we recently have had a couple of visitors from the U.S. Department of State who have come here to Salem, Oregon to visit us at Salem for Refugees because they've heard about this unique community-based model of supporting refugees. And they said, we have to learn about what's happening. And one of them, who's actually the head of all refugee resettlement for the whole United States, sitting in a meeting with us, and she said, what is this magic ingredient that makes this work here in the city of Salem? And I thought it was a great question, and, and, and we said, you know, I think the main thing is that Salem has this history of businesses and nonprofits and faith communities and community members all working together to tackle the problems, to make our community a healthy place. And so stepping into this room and seeing what you all are doing, I believe that this is a key part of what has made something like Salem for Refugees work, is decades of work in the community, making this a place where we care about one another, where we want to see our city be a place of peace and a place of health. So thank you for your part of that. I believe you've helped lay the foundation for what we're going to share with you today. The next thing we want to talk about is a little bit about the specifics of the global refugee crisis. So taking kind of a big picture view of what's going on in our world today. Currently, we're at the highest level of displaced people in the world that we have ever seen. 70.8 million, it's at the top there. This is an infographic that the UNHCR, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, puts out every year. And they update the numbers according to what's going on in our world. 25.9 million of the 70.8 million are what are considered refugees. A person is a, considered a refugee once they cross a border into another country, fleeing for, for their life uh, from war, persecution, or violence. This crisis continues to grow year after year. It's so large that, in fact, two additional people, uh, one additional person becomes displaced every two seconds. If you can imagine that. That's the equivalent to the entire city of, of Kaiser being displaced every day. Over 50% of refugees are under the age of 18. So it's a very vulnerable population at times with very young people. So that's kind of the, the big picture statistics. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about who are refugees. So obviously, Every refugee is an individual person with their own story, their own personalities, um, but there are some common shared experiences as we have gotten to know refugees both overseas and here in Salem. So I'll try to kind of paint a picture for you of what some of those common experiences are. To start, we're gonna show you a short video clip of a young woman named Marwa from Syria telling a little bit about her story. And this is, uh, stories like this are stories that we hear all the time from our refugee neighbors. اسمي مروه عجلوني عمري 21 سنه انا من سوريا 
اخر ليله قضيناها بسوريا كانت باول نهار ما كان في شيء بس فجاه على الساعه 3 تقريبا بلش القصف طلعنا لقينا العالم كلياتها حامله غراضها ورايحه مشي واخذنا غرضين يعني ما اخذنا شيء كثير المهم مشان نهرب يعني قبل ما يبلش القصف يعني بلش بعد ما رحنا بلش القصف ورفيقه لاخي دق له قال له انه شو اسمه رفيقه الثاني على الساعه 10 هن ما طلعوا دغري تاخروا طلعوا على الساعه 10 كان شغال القصف قام اجت قذيفه عليهم على سيارتهم وماتوا يعني كانوا سبعه هن والاولاد وكله بتمنى انه يعني كل شيء يعني دمر كل شيء راح كل شيء يرجع احسن من اول نحسن نرجع لبلدنا انه ما تطول هالشغله So as you heard from Marwa, these are folks who did not want to leave their homes. These are people who were forced to flee their homes because of a well-founded fear for their lives. These are also people who have experienced significant suffering and trauma. Most every refugee that we meet has seen someone killed in front of them, has had a home destroyed, has seen bombs exploding in front of them. So significant trauma that they have experienced. These are people who also typically spend about 10 to 20 years in a state of displacement. So either in a refugee camp or in some sort of a temporary dwelling. So for our families that we have here coming to Salem, it's very common that the children of these families have been born and raised their entire lives in a refugee camp before being resettled here. These are people who want the exact same things that any of us would want. They want opportunities for their kids. They want education. They want safety and freedom for their families. They want to live a life that's free from war, free from violence, free from fear. They want somewhere to call home, a permanent home, and they want hope for their future. Less than 1% of refugees get the opportunity to be resettled in a third country, such as the United States. So a very, very small fraction of the world's refugees. And then for those who do come to the United States, they go through a two to four year vetting process. And that's after spending 10 to 20 years in a state of displacement. So two to four year vetting process with four different US security agencies. So they are the, the most vetted form of traveler that ever sets foot into our country. And then they arrive in their cities. For most of them, it's a brand new language. It's a new culture, it's a new way of life. Most have very few possessions. And for those that come to Salem, most of them don't know anybody else. We get what's primarily called free cases, which are people that don't have any family tie in the United States. So they don't know anybody here. But I think one of the most important things I could tell you about refugees or our new neighbors, that's the term that we like to use in speaking about refugees, is that they are incredibly courageous people. They are skilled, they're determined, they're innovative, they're hospitable, they're resilient, and they are survivors. And they bring unique and valuable perspectives and talents to the communities where they resettle. So we looked a little bit at, at a global uh, refugee, at the global refugee crisis. And now we'll look a little bit more specific at what resettlement in the US looks like. The historic average in the US since the 1980s has been about 65 to 70,000 refugees resettled nationwide. Each year, the president sets the refugee admissions ceiling and then in consultation with Congress sets a budget for incoming refugees. In 2016, that was set at 96,000, 2017, 29,000, and 2018, it was 30,000. The refugee fiscal year ceiling for this year is set at 18,000. 
The average in Oregon has been about 1,200 refugees per year, and that's primarily been in the Portland area. And then as recent as 2015 is when refugees began to be resettled here in Salem. So when refugee resettlement began here in Salem at the end of 2015, there was a lot of community interest, a lot of excitement to support our new neighbors, but there was no organizing body to bring together the volunteers and the resources that were needed and to develop the infrastructure that we needed in Salem-Kaiser in order to support resettlement in Salem long term. In October of 2016, Salem Leadership Foundation hosted a series of five lunches to bring together anyone and everyone in the Salem community who was interested in getting involved and supporting our new neighbors. So we had those five lunches. We quickly saw how beneficial it was for all of us to be working together. So at the end of those lunches, Doug and I, who had recently returned from overseas, we presented this idea of Salem for Refugees as a way for us to continue the networking and continue the collaboration long term. Everyone was on board, and so in that way, Salem for Refugees was born. So our mission at Salem for Refugees is to be, bring people and resources together to empower refugees to thrive here in our city. We have helped over 300 refugees resettle in Salem over the past three and a half years. And those refugees represent 12 countries from Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Syria, Somalia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ivory Coast, Pakistan, Sudan, South Sudan, and Ukraine. We had just recently put together an overview video of what Salem for Refugees does. So you guys are among some of the first to see this video. We're very uh, happy about it and how it gives a picture of all the different things that Salem for Refugees does. A refugee, someone who has been forced to flee their home because of war, persecution, or violence. The international community is currently experiencing the largest refugee crisis that the world has ever seen. With millions of people living in refugee camps or temporary dwellings out of fear for their lives. A small fraction, less than 1%, of the world's refugees get the opportunity to be resettled in a third country such as the United States. Since the 1980s, all refugees who came to the state of Oregon were resettled in the Portland metro area. At the end of 2015, the resettlement of refugees was expanded to Salem and Kaiser due to the rising cost of housing. Salem had no centralized coordinating entity to bring together the people and resources necessary to make the city a welcoming place for refugees. Through a unique partnership between city organizations and passionate community members with a desire to help our new neighbors, Salem for Refugees was born. Salem for Refugees is a network of refugee resettlement agencies faith communities, businesses, nonprofits, government organizations, and community members. Our mission is to bring people and resources together to empower refugees to thrive. Our vision is to see all refugees in Salem as valued, thriving, contributing members of our community. As Salem for Refugees, we want to treat our new neighbors in the same way that we would want to be treated if we were in their shoes. To this end, we provide a variety of resources to support our new neighbors as they transition to life in America. Donations of furniture, household items and restart kits to help refugees set up their homes. Financial assistance to ensure that families can cover their basic needs as they are working on learning English and finding jobs. Mentor teams of volunteers that are paired with each new refugee family to walk alongside them as friends and guides through their resettlement journey. Resource teams of community members and organizations that develop infrastructure and provide resources for our new neighbors in key resource areas. The employment team connects refugees with employment opportunities to help them find sustainable jobs. 
English team networks ELL programs and volunteers throughout the city to help refugees learn English. The education team partners with Salem and Kaiser Public Schools to help refugees navigate the education system with their children. The healthcare team helps refugees navigate the medical system and access quality healthcare, including a focus on mental health and wellness. The housing team connects refugees with affordable housing throughout Salem and Kaiser. This group also includes a welcome home team that sets up homes and apartments with donated items. The meals team provides meals and events as venues for new neighbors to connect and build community. They also work with refugees who are already in Salem to prepare welcome meals for newly arriving families. The transportation team provides refugees with resources to access public transport, bicycles, and driving lessons. The legal team assists refugees with green card paperwork and other legal documents. The technology team provides refugees with resources for low-cost cell phones, computers, and internet. The Interpretive Services Team provides language interpretation for refugee families and volunteers. Our new neighbors have faced adversity and suffering that no human being should have to face. They are courageous, resilient individuals who bring beauty, diversity, richness, and unique gifts and talents to our community. Salem and Kaiser is a better place because of their presence here. Welcoming refugees is one of our oldest and most noble traditions in the United States of America. And it takes all of us to make our community a welcoming place where refugees can rebuild their lives and thrive. So a story of one family that we wanted to share with you, just as an example to kind of try to paint a more personal picture of these new neighbors who are in Salem-Kaiser. Want to introduce you to Iqbal. He is a single dad from Pakistan who has four daughters. And they were resettled here in Salem in February of 2017. Their story was that they faced very significant religious persecution in Pakistan. They were from a religious minority group, and one night, Iqbal was attacked by extremists who came to his home and tried to kill him. His wife was pregnant at the time with their fourth child, and the stress, extreme stress of the situation sent her into early labor. She then died in childbirth. So Iqbal had his four daughters. They had to flee to Thailand to escape him being killed. They were then put in prison in Thailand, and were there for several years before getting approved for resettlement here in the United States. They arrived in February of 2017. When we picked them up at the airport, they had come with two suitcases that had all of the belongings that they owned with them. They spoke very few words of English, and one of Iqbal's daughters has some pretty significant mental health issues. We arranged for them to live in a host home with a family for the first few weeks after they got here, and this family ended up becoming like family to them. We paired them with a mentor team of volunteers, six to eight volunteers, who helped them to get to know the community, who helped them learn how to go grocery shopping, took them to numerous medical appointments, helped to get the care that Iqbal needed for his daughter that had significant challenges, helped them learn how to ride the bus, helped them fill out all the paperwork that they had to fill out, helped the girls to get enrolled in school. We also connected them with the resource teams that you saw on the video, with, uh, helped them with things like getting a job. I remember when Iqbal first got here, even a few days after he got here, he talked with Doug and I and he said, I need a job. Can you help me get a job? I need to find a job. Where can I work? That was the very first thing on his mind, was how do I get a job? He's now employed at Sparrow Furniture, where he's learning some excellent customer service and woodworking skills. The resource teams were able to help them get their green cards, which now everyone in the family has. Help them take English classes. Now you can have full conversations with Iqbal in English, and his girls don't even sound like they have an accent. They learned English so quickly. 
They're getting the health care resources that they need for their children. They are living in an affordable apartment in a good location for their family. The teams helped him to be able to get his driver's license. He used to own his own um, taxi cab and be a taxi driver as well as a mechanic in Pakistan. And that's his dream someday, to be a taxi driver here. So now he has his license and he has his own vehicle. A little over a year ago, something pretty amazing happened, which is that Iqbal's sister and her husband and their two kids, who had been still also in Thailand, where they had fled as well, were able to come here and join Iqbal and his girls here in Salem. So now those two families are here together. That airport welcome was a pretty special day when they were able to come and join him. Iqbal loves his job, he's providing for his family, he communicates well in English, his girls are healthy and happy, they're thriving in school, an opportunity that they had not had in Pakistan. He told us that it was the dream of his wife that her daughters would get an education, and he said, now I am getting to fulfill that dream for my wife. Iqbal is one of the most hospitable people you will ever meet. If you ever get invited to his home, he will prepare a feast for you that's fit for about 50 people, and it will be one of the most amazing meals of your life. So that's just one example, one story of these incredible, resilient families who I believe are truly making our community a better place, hard workers using their gifts and talents here in the city of Salem. And it's such a privilege for us and for all the community of Salem for Refugees, over 270 volunteers that are part of this network, the multiple faith communities, nonprofits, businesses, community organizations that are part of this effort. I think any one of us who's been part of this would say what a privilege that it is for us and how much we learn from our new neighbors um, and are just grateful for the opportunity to be a part of their lives. So as we continue to think about how to expand the network and, and uh, partner with people throughout the Salem-Kaiser area, I want to give you guys some ways that you're, you would be able to take action. Uh, the first thing is to attend what we call our Welcoming Our New Neighbors meetings. We hold these meetings on the first Monday of every month. And there's a flyer on your table that has some of the ways that you can get involved, so there's more information there. The meetings are from 12 to 1.30, so it's a lunch meeting. And... Uh, they are held at Salem Alliance Church, and it's a great opportunity just to stay educated, to network, and collaborate in support of our new neighbors. And we have a meeting coming up on December 2nd, so I'd invite, invite all of you to come to that. It's a great opportunity to get more involved. Next opportunity is to volunteer, to volunteer with a mentor team or a resource team. The video that you saw gave an overview of some of those teams. The mentor teams are paired with families as they arrive, and you get to walk closely with those families, particularly in their first year of being resettled here in Salem. The resource teams focus on different areas. Uh, you saw employment, English, healthcare. So if you have an expertise in one of those areas, I'm told there are a few businesses represented here, so that could be an opportunity. Uh, next opportunity would be for businesses to actually hire refugees at your place of business. As Tom mentioned, Don Poncho is one place that has been a big partner so far, Sparrow Furniture, Kettle Chips. We have several businesses that have created pathways for our new neighbors to get employment uh, right away. And it's amazing to see their hard work and diligence as they uh, seek to provide for their families almost as soon as they arrive. Another opportunity is to donate, to sponsor a refugee, or to become a corporate sponsor. There are opportunities there. And then also just to join the Salem for Refugees email list. So if you want to stay up to date on what's happening with uh, refugee resettlement here in the Salem area, as well as ways, other ways that you can be involved, being on that email list is a great opportunity. We have some materials available. There's some flyers on your tables, um, more flyers on that back table. I think the, the check-in table by the door back there. We have some business cards there as well. There's also a sign-up sheet there where you can sign up if you'd like to join the Salem for Refugees email list or if you'd like to be contacted about any of those opportunities that Doug just mentioned, volunteering, hiring refugees, sponsoring a refugee, or corporate sponsorship opportunities. And I think that's all that we have. Do we have time for questions? We do. Okay, great. Well, then we will take a few questions. I think there's a microphone there that will get passed around. So, um, so please, any questions you have about Salem for Refugees or our new neighbors? 
Uh, just a comment, actually. So I've had the opportunity to meet one of these families of our new neighbors, and these people are amazing people. It, they're, it's, they're not just saying that. They truly are. And they have unique skill sets to help the city of Salem truly be the city of Shalom, a city of peace. And so it's not just people who need our help, but they have something to teach us. And I think we'll miss that if we just see, well, how can I help them? Because they have something that they can help us with, too. Yeah, absolutely, Jerry. That's in this work, we, we constantly feel like we are gaining way more than, than what we're giving. Christy Perry, Salem Kaiser. I just wanted to say thank you because we haven't officially met. So behind every store you hear, there's also a group of kids that comes to our school. And the partnership with Salem Refugee has really helped us manage that in ways because they come a lot of times without formal schooling. And so we've had lots of conversations about grade placement. Uh, we've changed some of our uh, procedures for enrollment as a result of really strong communication. And we've even gotten OSAA to change a rule around, I know, that in and of itself is a big deal. We got OSAA to change a rule around how we handle our uh, refugee students in athletics because they didn't have formal schooling, they often wouldn't be eligible to participate in high school because they wouldn't have credits. So the partnership has been um, amazing and we're uh, every day get better because we work together. So thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you, Christy. It is really nice to meet you. <laughs> and Salem Kaiser Public Schools has been an incredible partner from the very beginning when refugees first started coming to Salem. They've been part of the initial meetings. They have staff that comes to our Monday meetings every month and our leaders on our education team. So we're very grateful for that partnership and for the school district's commitment to supporting these new neighbor kids. My name is Craig Stinson. I have been a volunteer at Salem for Refugees for about two and a half years now. Um, the gentleman that you saw that has the four girls, Iqbal, I'm a really good friend of his. I'm actually the one that filled out the documentation for him and his family that actually got him the green card. So that's how I know him. I also know that he is a very good cook, <laughs> which you might like to know. One of the reasons I'm standing up here is, uh, is one of the things that all of you can help with specifically. Um, I am actually chairing a task force for housing stability for refugees here in Salem. And we're just kicking this off. Uh, we're trying to kind of create a pipeline of affordable housing homes for people. And um, I've been working on this for a couple months, and I've just realized that um, this idea of affordable housing in Salem is much bigger than me, and much bigger than Salem for refugees. And so um, if you get a mail out, or if you're interested in helping with that, uh, we're looking for legal help that actually understands our real estate and those kind of transactions. We're also looking to try to get uh, private money in Salem involved in uh, getting housing together. And so we're looking for a CPA that understands real estate and tax loopholes and that kind of stuff to get those kind of things going. So I'd appreciate if you come and see me uh, before we leave today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that comment. We have had some incredible people here in Salem who have just stepped up in helping with uh, housing. And there's actually a group of investors who have purchased uh, broken down houses. They'll go in and refurbish the houses themselves and then uh, rent them out at affordable rates to our new neighbors. And currently we have a few of those families that are actually purchasing those homes from the investors. And it's, so it's incredible to see that many of these families have dreamed of owning their own home someday. And that dream is becoming a reality because of incredible people here in Salem. I just had a quick question over here. Um, do they always come in family groups, or are there ever just children that come, or just couples without children? I'm uh, just curious. Yeah, so it's a, a big variety of people that arrive. We haven't received anyone that's just children without parents. Uh, we have received individuals or couples and then families. Most of them have been larger families that, that arrive with five, six, seven, eight, nine kids sometimes. Uh, but wonderful, beautiful families. 
Hi, quick question. Uh, they come from a lot of different countries and presumably a lot of different faith backgrounds. And I was wondering, I didn't see a team to connect in other opportunities for them to worship in their faith tradition. Yeah, so we have partnered with uh, several different groups here in the Salem-Kaiser area. Uh, the Salem Islamic Center, we've connected with Temple Beth Shalom, uh, with many different denominations in the Christian faith, and so some of them come with different uh, denominations that they would like to plug into here. And so we do the best we can with our volunteers and mentor teams to connect people with the groups that they uh, are able to plug into and feel comfortable with. Yeah, there's over 35 different faith communities that have been a part of Salem for Refugees. And for most of our refugee families, faith is really important to them. So that's been a key piece, connecting them with a faith community. Hi, I'm Georgie Lance with Dodie Pruitt Wilson. And um, thank you. You definitely opened my eyes. Thank you. Um, I'm just on a personal basis. I, I'm kind of excited because it seems like I go to the grocery store every other day. And I like to shop, but could you paint a picture of how that specific help uh, might be done? I mean, like driving, do you pick up the family and take them? You know, I mean, and thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So especially initially when families first get here, I don't know if any of you have had experience living overseas. I know for us living overseas, going grocery shopping was always one of the most overwhelming things. <laughs> because you don't know what things are, you don't understand the labels, it's all food that you're, you know, a lot of it's food that you're not used to. So especially when families first get here, that is a big piece of what the mentor team volunteers help them to do. Um, and typically, initially, it involves helping transport them to and from the grocery store. Um, the goal is to teach independence, so we try to help teach them, you know, how to ride the bus even with groceries over time, but for the first few weeks, we really like to have people driving them to make it a little bit easier. So taking them to the store, just walking through the aisles, helping to help them find things they're looking for. Sometimes it might be drawing pictures, looking things up on Google Translate to figure out what it is they're looking for. And those can be kind of long grocery store trips <laughs> at the beginning, but um, is a huge part of making people feel at home when they can find foods that they like and figure out how to make the dishes that, um, that represent home to them. Great. Thank you for the great questions, and thanks again for having us. Well, that is uh, pretty inspirational for all of us who have not been exposed to that group before, and I think uh, I can comfortably say, Doug and Anya, this is a group that activates. So uh, on December 2nd, you may have a few additional members at your luncheon. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to bring up before we conclude our business today. Uh, would our MAPS students kindly stand up and be recognized for their work? Each uh, month at the Forum Luncheon, our great partners at MAPS Credit Union bring a number of their students that are uh, working on the behalf of a banking career or getting used to some financial services. And so those of you today, thank you for being here. We have an outstanding event that occurs each year that really brings people together from our ag community uh, and our safe agribusiness banquet uh, presented by our great friends at Key Bank will be occurring on Friday, uh, January 17th and tickets are officially open and ready to be reserved. So our staff team is ready to take those, Heidi Cowden and our team uh, just can't wait for you to get your, your tickets placed now. Uh, we have the option for tables or individual tickets, and thank you so much for the sponsors who make that occur. We have a centerpiece in front of you today. Our great friends at Ross Family, uh, pardon me, Ross Fresh Markets are so kind to make that occur each month for us, and I noticed Tim Jennings is here with a smile on. Tim, thank you so much for you and the support that Ross gives this organization. And this will go each month to a season ticket holder, chosen at random. And uh, as Rian on our staff brightly came up with this wonderful way, there's apps for all this now. And so our random season ticket generator, uh, Rachel Davis with uh, First Call Home Health will be taking home 
this bouquet today. Now, where is Rachel? Rachel, if you would. Afterwards, come up, we'll grab a quick photo uh, with you and Tim and, and uh, hopefully take it back to the office and brighten up things a little bit. And congratulations. Uh, you may have noticed I forgot one of our head table introductions. That, that fine device at the end, that is our new member bell at the Salem Chamber. And the strength of this organization is in making sure we are bringing more and more businesses to the table. Uh, Zachary Zalicki heads up our membership department, and one of the real innovative ways we've enjoyed bringing people together is a little bit of the excitement of ringing the new member bell. So if you have a peer who would benefit from coming to the table and seeing the work that the Salem Chamber is doing in advocacy, workforce development, connecting and learning, or any of our channels uh, that can help this business community come stronger together, we'd invite you. We have a number of champions for new business. I think of Rich Duncan, Ken Junt, Kathy Gordon, Caleb Williams, people who want to bring individuals into this organization. Those champions need some help. And uh, so if you have a peer who hasn't checked out the Salem Chamber yet, we can put Kurt Arthur on them. He'll turn their arm a little bit, but show the great things that we're doing, and we'd love to have them join, join us in the future. Huggins Insurance, thank you so much for being so visible in this community. I see we have two tables of uh, your peers here, and thank all of you for the work you're doing to make Salem better. Uh, Don, it takes commitment at the top to be invested, and thank you so much for leading that effort and for allowing TJ to be so involved in so many parts of this community like the rest of your staff. Next month's forum will feature our new president of Chemeketa Community College, Dr. Jessica Howard. We'd invite you to join us, and if you're those of you with your smartphones now, that's on December 9th uh, here at the Convention Center. Without the work of our Convention Center staff, these meetings are quite as special, and uh, the meals continue to be excellent, and that really is important for us because we're not looking to scrimp quarters or, or save, save a couple nickels here and there. I'm hoping that uh, you're enjoying the meals, and as always, their service is, is fantastic. Our partners at Allied Video make this type of production occur, and uh, less on our staff to have to worry about these things. So thank you, as always, to our partners uh, at Allied Video. And our new partner, who is in their second month now, uh, our CCTV is recording each of these forums and then publishing that throughout their uh, television calendar each month. And those are re uh, replayed at certain times, so if you have somebody who missed, we got a great channel and outlet uh, for them uh, to see it. Our ambassador groups roll out the red carpet each month, and uh, I know a number of you are here today. Thank you so much for making our first uh, impression one with a smile and a handshake. And Victoria, you represent everything great in this city. I think you saw by a standing ovation how much you mean to this community and what you continue to give and what you stand for, which is perseverance and we can get through challenges. Uh, know that you represent that so, so well. I am very blessed to work with a J great uh, chamber staff team. I know a number of you get to meet and interact with those people. We're here in servant leadership, and uh, their positive attitudes and engaging personalities are what make this organization strong, and we're very honored to serve you in that. So uh, if our staff can ever be uh, of greater service to you uh, to connect you to this organization, please let us know. With that, in this month of Thanksgiving, I say God bless you all, and thank you so much for being here. Let's go make Salem great. Thank you all.